uh, it's all over, not just like South Africa, but even in the US and the UK, they say it's useless. Like We can't all be doing BSc to get into medicine. The man to me, go back, study medicine, because with this one, you can't really do much. The biggest mistake is that we feather our studies without the intention of even using this postgraduate degree. How did you cope with the disappointment of not getting into medicine? Hi guys, welcome to The Village. My name is Bonnie. I create content around careers, education with a dose of reality check. Today we are checking out Miss Ayanda Hope Mkwanazi. Okay, Ayanda is a clinical research associate. She holds a BSc degree in human physiology, genetics and psychology, and she has an honors degree in human physiology with a measure in neurophysiology. Okay, we we'll let her explain all these terms for us <laughs> before we get our tongues uh, twisted. Um, yeah, guys, we're going to chat about um, this infamous uh, degree, uh, BSc degree, uh, BSc in life sciences, uh, life sciences related degrees, of course. Okay, guys, if you haven't uh, joined our village, please do so by subscribing. Uh, I know a lot of people, YouTube tells me that 80% of my of the viewers of this channel, they are not subscribed. Please uh, press the subscribe button, guys. It's free and it helps me a lot as a channel otherwise let's now welcome miss ayanda mkwanazi hi ayanda how are you hi bonnie i'm good how are you i'm good i'm good uh i'm not alone i'm with the village so you have to recognize the village and say hi to the village hello hello to the village um thank you so much guys for having me i hope this will be uh an awesome awesome conversation between me and you and Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here, uh, Mam Kwanazi. Are you Zulu? Mkwanazi is Zulu. Are you Zulu? <laughs> yes, um Zulu Nyakulum. Nyakulum. <laughs> um Zulu Agobi. Well um Zulu as a Joe but you know in your feet and gin as a kid at engine your feet and I end up straight to the point, straight to the point. Did you want to do medicine? Did you want to become a medical doctor? Yes. So, Vela, from high school, I've always wanted to be a doctor. I've always wanted to study medicine. That was mm -hmm. my um, primary goal um, for, 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 for the future and for my career. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously, it's indoor as humbly as we planned all the time. And uh, this is where it ends me to the point that we are at right now. But my primary goal was definitely to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. What happened after school, like after high school? So during high school, obviously, man, man are prepared for the other side. You do your applications mm -hmm. and you are put on like a waiting list. There's a whole lot of a process that happens mm -hmm. when you transition from high school to university. So I did not get accepted for medicine mm -hmm. um, when I applied. So mm -hmm. my first choice was definitely MBCHB. Um, and my second choice was, <laughs> funny enough, pharmacy. I wanted to study pharmacy if medicine doesn't work. And then my mm -hmm. last choice was a BSc uh, degree. But at the time, um, obviously, different institutions offer a different BSc degrees. Um, at the University of Pretoria, I think I had applied for biological sciences. So it was a mm -hmm. BSc in biological sciences. It was a mm -hmm. bridging course. Um, that mm. kind of like could lend you to to medicine, and then at 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 Vits, I think I applied for life sciences or something like that. Mm. I don't remember very well, but mm. yeah, I I had quite a, a few options, but the first one was medicine, and the second one was pharmacy. Okay, yeah. and then what happened with pharmacy? Why uh, if when you couldn't get into medicine, uh, why you didn't go for pharmacy? Um, remember, I just said. Uh, e e medicine was like my first goal, right? So that's where I mm. wanted to to 
to go. That's what I wanted mm. to pursue. So pharmacy was kind of like, uh, I could do this if this doesn't work out. But mm. I wanted to try and explore all possible avenues <laughs> in that, that could get me to medicine. And the closest thing that could get me to medicine was to do uh, a BSc degree. And then later on, maybe I can like bridge into it. So if pharmacy felt like, uh, maybe it's a little bit of a commitment. So maybe let me do the BSc and see what happens in the next few years. So, so yeah, that's how it came about me choosing BSc instead. Okay, yeah. no, I get it. And I <laughs> see you've had five jobs in a space of five years, and all of them you yeah. stay like one year. Uh, yeah. How did that come about? <laughs> Okay, so one, I must tell you, uh, Bonnie, we'll see, my industry is very fast paced, right? Uh, mm. The pharmaceutical industry, there's so many things changing all the time. And mm. because um, when I started with my, with my career in this field, I've mm. always thought I want to be a clinical research associate. I didn't really understand how I'm going to get there because there isn't like a step-by-step -step process on how to get there. But I knew, mm. Uti, I think I want to be a clinical research associate. So uh, during my period in the industry, I then started to work towards being a CRA. So every year I had a goal see this is what I want to do and then I'm going to keep applying to a mm. position that's going to get me to the next step and then apply for a position that's going to get me to the next step until I get there so and also I'm sure you, you you've seen with my CV the reason why there's so many uh, jobs in a small mm. space is because when there's an opportunity that gives you kind of like a stepping ladder to the next one you run mm. you run with it so, but at your current job, you've been there for over a year now, or is it 18 months? Am I correct? It's just over a year. It was a year in September. Ah, guys, <laughs> I'm ready for the body. <laughs> oh my God. Guys, please don't forget to like and share this video and drop some questions for Ayanda. I promise you, Ayanda will come back to this video and answer any questions for you. Uh, we're going to get to how you got your first job later. But I just want to understand as a BSc degree holder, uh, you even have honors now. Okay. Once you had your undergrad, did someone advise you would say, no, Ayanda, for you to have opportunities, you need to do your postgrad? No. Someone instead said to me, just put your degree on the side and go study medicine because you can. You have the ability to. And I was like, ah. Oh. Now I have to start again. So mm. the first person who ever gave me career advice that I felt could have done so much work for me said to me, go back, study medicine, because with this one, you can't really do much. That's what they said to me. So and I said, no, but it can't it can't work like that because it has to give something. Bonnie, if you're going to invest four years of your life mm. obtaining um, a degree, it has to give something. There must be some way that you can implement this. It, 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 it should mm. work some way. So I've always Somehow. had that at the back of my head. Yeah, mm. Uti, it can't all be in vain. And it can't mm. all lead to getting me into medicine because there's so many other graduates in a similar situation. We can't mm. all be doing BSc to get into medicine there must be other avenues out there and industries must be picking up the the need somewhere so i i just wanted to explore that need mm, okay so at this point uh just to be clear you were thinking yes said, let me make this work whatever it yeah is, no, let me just <laughs> make it work so this is why you moved and did your honors degree Yes, so um, it wasn't a cut and dry decision as well. Um, mm -hmm. It had a lot of it had a lot of loopholes that I needed to close as I go. Because after my degree, I went to my mentor. I said to my mentor, "What then do I do with this degree?" And he said, "Go study medicine." <laughs> and I said, "No, oh. give me another option." Yes, and then another option for me was let me further my studies while I do the honors, which it, which for now we can expand on this conversation as we go in this interview but the biggest mistake is that we feather our studies without the intention of even using this postgraduate degree but mm -hmm. my intention was let me feather the study the 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 
this degree then it will mm-hmm. buy me another year while i'm doing my honors to research and think about what i'm gonna do <laughs> you oh. see so i i said okay let me buy myself one more year do the honors and then see what i'm gonna do if i fail after honors then maybe maybe i i, I can explore medicine who was your mentor was it your lecturer or someone who just worked in the industry who was your mentor what you don't need to mention their names but i just want to understand i just want to have context who were they were all by who would tell someone after four years you know who would be <laughs> brave enough to just tell someone after four or five years who would say no for your telepaths <laughs> who was your mentor <laughs> at that point <laughs> Ironically, he is a doctor. <laughs> he is a doctor oh, okay. and he used to be one of the um uh people at the Department of Health. So he he just had he probably had a different vision or he just felt, you know what? Cuz I know how bad you want this. So maybe maybe explore that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he just wanted me to be his right-hand woman. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So what are your views? I think already um someone watching this and myself we are already gathering would say okay your views around this particular a uh, degree BSc in life sciences can we call your your your, your is human physiology a pone but is does it fall under um life sciences Yes, so it falls under the life sciences umbrella. So there's mm-hmm. very 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 different um disciplines under the BSc degree. I'm sure you know there's mathematics, mm-hmm. there's um environmental science, there's so much more there's um medical fields in the yeah. BSc um umbrella. So there's so many more, but I fall under the life sciences one. The life sciences. Okay. So what are your yeah. views on the BSc life sciences? Uh it's all over not just like South Africa but even in the US and the mm-hmm. UK they say it's useless like people shouldn't pursue it. What are your views on that? Well, if you want to work for a company or an institution or a government agency or any other traditional white collar jobs um um and have access to promotions and the things that the nice things that we have on the other side i would say it's a resounding yes but if i i would say it really really depends much on the field of study as well mm. so there are mm. some professions for which you need like a master's degree or phd um level in order for you to land a successful job and things like that are like uh psychology for example so some mm. fields of study have extremely limited applications and the demand in the workplace is extremely limited as well so mm-hmm. spending so much money and time achieving um this degree would would not be i, I would not recommend it but the good mm-hmm. news is that some bachelor's degree programs are very very um useful and there is a great demand with within industries for people that hold these degrees to explore and pharmaceutical industry is one for life science bsc degree holders okay so if they could look at the pharmaceutical uh, space that's where there are opportunities yeah it's not the only uh, industry that has opportunities so people should understand with it depends on what you are doing um i mean there are people mm-hmm. who are successful with their bsc in mathematics people who are su- successful with a BSc in other fields I have uh, a friends that are environmentalists they studied BSc in environmental science and they're doing well they work for mines you know so there's so many things and so many disciplines and industries that you can penetrate into with your BSc degree so Ogoti city all of it is useless then we are totally misleading um mm. a, a whole generation of graduates because But then we are that. putting it under one umbrella Let's talk mm. about the BSc life sciences. That's the one that I want us to focus yeah. on and I think yeah. that's where you fall and yeah. cuz really we can't talk about the environmental people cuz really uh, there might dynamics <laughs> upon. I would love to if there's someone in environmental sciences mm. please uh contact <laughs> me. <laughs> I would love to engage someone who's in the environmental space. 
but the life sciences because it just looks yeah. like some people or most people they will pursue it with the hopes of getting into medicine and then when sometimes when that doesn't happen and then you have to study further for you to get a job so maybe from that point of view would say it's not something if you need to change the situation again so something that's gonna have a more like quick results with your undergrad perhaps and i think this is why i asked you who would say why did you do your postgrad but you, you've explained to us already that i you know what you were just trying to buy time just to make up your mind but and uh, besides the field that you are in like typically what type of job would you do if you have a bsc in human physiology mm -hmm. like typically let's just say our government maybe is investing in research you know things are good you know we don't have the challenges that we are having as a country typically what type of job would you do one would be the kind of job that i do i'm a clinical okay. research associate i work for a pharmaceutical industry pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. has so many sub -dis disciplines inside of it right mm -hmm. there's medical sales there's uh, people working in the lab that are lab technicians all of those people you are able to do with your bsc <laughs> degree you are able to be a project manager for clinical trials, for uh, um, any other studies that you are involved in in research. You are able mm. to be uh, in the data data management team. You are mm. able to be in um, a, be a clinical research associate like myself. You are able to mm. monitor clinical trials. Mm. There's so many things. I think just talking about the pharmaceutical industry alone, because I have experience in that. I've been in mm. that field for over five years. There's mm. so much more things that you can do with just your BSc degree. So it's not a, mm. it's not a, that's why I say it's not um, a, like any other mainstream career where you obtain your degree and then you, you, you work mm. exactly what you studied. Our degree has you have to penetrate put yourself in spaces that can eventually work for it and pharmaceutical industry is one of the hubs for for bsc students mm, okay what is the state of research in south africa right now what do you think where, where are we as a country when it comes to research is there funding um what's going on there mm. So I think another misconception that we have near research mm -hmm. is the one that is held in academic institutions, right? Mm -hmm. And I want the viewers, the village, to hear me correctly mm -hmm. here. That is just one portion of research. The one that mm -hmm. is being held in, in university um, institutions is just one portion of it. The one that is being had in government institutions is just mm -hmm. one portion of it. But a very, very big portion of it is the one that is being held by pharmaceutical companies. What are pharmaceutical companies? Pharmaceutical companies, I'm talking the most famous examples, the Pfizer, your Sanofi, mm -hmm. your, you know, companies like that. Those are companies that are multi-billion dollar companies, but that are leading research, that are leading clinical trials, that are leading mm. medical device research in the country, outside of the country, globally, everywhere, mm. right? Mm. But talking about South Africa only, um, we are um, a dominant producer of research publications um, mm. in the African continent, even though we do have uh, strong containers like Egypt or Nigeria, but we mm. kind of like, you know, are in the forefront so with the kind of research that i do um which are clinical trials i would say mm -hmm. due to the fact that Puti, our community is very diverse it makes us um a hub of of scientific yeah. exploration as well yeah. so we are booming and also looking at how covid has affected us over the years it has showed us Puti, the pharmaceutical industry on its own can literally stand the test of times we had the most active industry during the COVID times we were looking mm. for series we were looking for people to to do clinical trials we we're looking for research sites we were one of the most thriving industries during the COVID times so i have no doubt to say that uh, the research space in south africa is doing nothing but growing growing yeah. okay okay 
fair enough. <laughs> Guys, please don't forget <laughs> to like and share this video and leave any comments or questions uh, for Ayanda, okay? Ayanda, yeah. let's rewind a bit. I just want to know, I, I love uh, giving a village um, a full picture about a person. Now you are this young woman, uh, you are successful in what you are doing. You know, things are great, but I always... I always wonder, like, how were you, like, a scholar in high school? How was your bet? <laughs> Obviously, I know your bet was good, uh, but how was it? Uh, how much did you get for your maths and physics in high school? I don't remember the exact percentages because that was a long time ago. It was more okay. than, just over 10 years ago. Um, yeah. But I know for sure I got a distinction for physics and I got, it was very good good result for maths as well yeah but not a distinction but very good thank you yeah, so thank you. my high school was very very eventful i've always been like a, a, a an explorer so i've always been part of a program they call a science expo um for young okay. scientists that okay. was that was um initially led by the denial aviation and then escom also hopped in to 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 sponsor the the initiative so i've always been a, 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 a candidate Exit. every year every single year <laughs> every single year until i left high school and then i became a judge after high school then i became the science expo judge as well so i've always been wow. active in in the science field it's always been my interest it's always been my thing which school did you go <laughs> to ayanda i went to lesiba secondary school that is in daviton I don't know if, mm -hmm. if you know it, but yeah, yeah, it's a, okay. it's a it's a public school. It's a public school. It has a very very good de reputation, but the reputation came after us, <laughs> so okay. at least we can still claim it. <laughs> but yeah, we we had okay. a good time. Okay, Davidson. Okay, <laughs> you, you know what? I'm beginning to think people are gonna think I select people who went to township schools for this interview. Can't you know, guys? <laughs> I never knew, I never know. Actually, I only know about your high school when we are chatting here. That's the only time I know where, which school mm -hmm. you went to. Because, Pella, guys, you are old yeah. now. You don't put your high school on your CVs. So I just never know. Okay, so any career guidance? Mm -hmm. um, how was your school? Who, which teacher, like, who was your math teacher, physics teacher? I want to give them a shout out uh, for, the, for the good work <laughs> they've done with you. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Shabalala. He was my physics teacher. He was very impactful in almost um, all my life decisions, especially when it comes to my career, especially when it comes to, you know, um, doing what I'm currently doing. He held it together because he's always just been there. So shout out to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Hi. Shine, Mr. Yeah. Shabalala. Shine. <laughs> and your next teacher. I don't remember his name. <laughs> I don't remember Ayanda. his name. So, Ayanda, you've already mentioned Umise Shabalala. Uguti, Jay, he played a huge role. So, you had a bit of career guidance from him. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shabala, for that. So, now, tell us, Ayanda, tell the village, how did you cope with the disappointment of not getting into medicine? Um, I'm asking this. I know you've moved on, but I just... Maybe someone is going mm. through the same thing, but maybe Bona, they haven't finished the, their secondary or second choice degree. Maybe they're still feeling a bit icky about it. So how did you cope with that disappointment? Well, mm. Boni, that's a very, very beautiful question. Um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't mm -hmm. easy to a point where I tried. I didn't try once. I didn't try twice. I didn't mm -hmm. try three times. I tried mm -hmm. a couple of times to a point where even after obtaining my BSc degree, I did still go and write the GEMP exam adverts to try and get in still. I tried to also apply for the Cuba um, scholarship <laughs> to mm -hmm. go study okay. in Cuba. I tried. I tried every possible opportunity under the sun to get there, but it, it mm -hmm. just didn't work out even though sometimes it was very very close to getting there but it just didn't get there but i think the one thing that comforted me um guleo situation was the fact that 
I didn't give up on this little structure I've built on the other mm-hmm. side. With this degree, mm-hmm. I didn't totally give up on it. I've always felt like it. there's something I can do with this, even though I didn't know what I, mm. I, I could do with it, but I just knew that there's something I can do with it because four years of studying can't just go in vain. So, so I remember this one time I was, mm, I was sitting in an honors class <laughs> yeah. back at tax when I was doing my honors. Um, and we had a professor from overseas. I forgot his name. And uh, when he got into the classroom he introduced himself he Mm -hmm. just told us about what he does and things like that and then he he was just going around the room asking us what do we want to do with with this degree when we are done with it with this honors Mm -hmm. when we are done and i remember more than 90 percent of the people in the classroom said we are trying to apply for medicine (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and at the time that he asked that question, at the time that he asked that question, I feel like he was such a blessing in disguise because I had already started doing my research with trying to get opportunities here and there. So at mm-hmm. the time I was doing my honors, I was also doing this voluntary study coordinator role that I, mm-hmm. I was doing at this site. So mm-hmm. I kind of like had a, a, an idea now of what I can do if medicine doesn't work out so i had a different Mm. answer to almost everyone in the classroom because he said to me what do you want to do with this degree ma'am and i said i want to be a clinical research associate and everyone looked at me weird in the classroom what is that what what, what, what Mm. does that even do you know is that even a real thing to do Mm. and um and then i remember he said oh you want to go into pharma okay i see that's not gonna be very easy but it's it's possible. It's a possibility. I have quite a, a few people I know in in pharma um, mm-hmm. that have made it, that are successful, and that are are doing well. So all the best. And that's all he said. And right oh. after that, it sparked a conversation because now everyone in the classroom was asking me, "What did you say you want to be? Or you want to do? Um, and how are you going to do that? Like, what what is that?" And it sparked a whole conversation and people started looking out for it. People started following me on LinkedIn because they were like, we just want to see how you're going to get uh, uh, to do Into whatever this. that you had planned to do. Because we don't, we don't know that. Um, mm-hmm. And then one time when I finally got my foot in the door, life mm-hmm. changed forever. And I never looked back. That that's I just never looked back. Now I look at... Um, I have doctor friends. I love them so much. I think they're doing amazing. I think they're doing well. But I feel like I am better off. <laughs> yeah. I got off the hook. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Especially now with the state of medicine. Yeah. You know, doctors can also be un- unemployed now. After ComSAM, mm. they can't find placements. There's just a lot going on. I mean, what I'm gathering from this conversation, and I'm sure the village will see this, would seem as much as you are still trying to pursue medicine, but you also make sure that you do something about what you already have. You were already trying to yeah. do something and making use of what you already have. <laughs> and the guys, that's what I want you to take from yes. this conversation. I'm still going to ask who I am about other things, yeah. but uh, even if you log out of this video now, that's what I want you to understand, would say you can make sure so ayanda tell me why you didn't go the teaching routes like some people they will go and teach <laughs> well it's a funny story because when i was doing my honors um mm-hmm. i always want I, I think it's just my personality i always want to explore everything every possible mm-hmm opportunity that just seems pursuable i want to do it so i also did try to apply for pgce at unisa but i was this was when i i just graduated honors and Mm -hmm. my internship was about to end i didn't know what i was going to do now because i mean i got totally any job after that so i was just like "Hmm, maybe it's time to do pgce you know, mm-hmm. and and try mm-hmm. to 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 make that work, and mm-hmm. 
I remember I had a colleague of mine who also was trying to pursue that and we applied together. Masek fee is cut so good. Is this an application fee? I didn't. I just yeah. felt no. Mm -mm. It's this not, is not it. Okay. And mm -hmm. she sent her application and she went through. Um, it worked out for her. She's a teacher now. I love her so much. Um, and I just decided, no, th this one has to work. <laughs> and uh, when, uh, I entered a graduate. Mm -hmm. I entered a graduate program and I got in. <laughs> mm. How did you enter? How did you get yeah. your first opportunity now? You've done your honors. I think that's where we need to get to now. How did you get that first opportunity? Mm -hmm. You are mentioning a graduate program. How did you know about it? And how did that work out for you? So remember when I was doing my honors, um, in parallel, I was doing an internship kind of mm -hmm. small thing Volunteer. that I had been doing here yeah, at, at site. So that got me a lot mm -hmm. of um, exposure to opportunities and things that I can focus on, you know. So mm -hmm. it kind of like gave me a structure because that's what I didn't mm -hmm. have. With my BSc degree, I didn't have the structure. So getting into that small Anyana job kind of gave me a structure. And one time I stumbled upon uh, a Sanofi a graduate program. It was the first one that year ever that they tried something like that. This was in 2018. And they said, we are looking for graduates that want to work in the pharmaceutical space. And um, you must record a video send a video and submit mm. it and we'll see where it takes you i did exactly that <laughs> i did a video in my bedroom it was so dark bad quality all of the things you can imagine that could go wrong went wrong yeah. with that video but unfortunately mm. i got the opportunity i was shortlisted um there were 20 candidates that were taken that year and um <laughs> yeah and we had a, a three-day okay. program to to propose a business to... plan. Yeah, they okay. exposed us to so many it... disciplines, so many things. Mm. Does it still exist, um, the graduate program? Oh, I lost yes, it. Yes, it does. Does it still exist? It does. Yes, oh, okay. yes it does. It's an ongoing it's an ongoing annual program that Sanofi does. Every year they have an intake. I don't know. I can't confirm mm -hmm. the number of graduates they take every year. But every year they mm -hmm. do provide some form of uh, support. Mm. Mm, okay. No, that's good to hear, guys. Uh, Ayanda is going to share a link with me. And then I'll leave it in the description box uh, below. Tell us, Ayanda, were your uh, studies uh, self-funded or you got a bursary of some sort? So at university, I got a bursary. Uh, the bursary was GC was from GCRA. So it's a Gauteng City Region Academy bursary program. So, um, yeah, they funded my studies up until I finished. And then for my honors, I mm -hmm. got NRF, NRF to fund my studies <laughs> okay so your first yeah. internship well not internship um the internship you were volunteering right you were not getting paid there when you were doing your internship am i correct yeah. well we were getting a stipend so i wouldn't really say we were getting paid it was just support so that was mm -hmm. the next day yeah how much was it two thousand <laughs> The stipend was, um, it was initially 3,500 and then raised, and then it was like 4,500. So it was exciting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it was and really little, which year but was yeah. this? Which year was this, Ayanda, for context? Okay. That was good. 2018. Uh, for 2018, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we yeah. graduate program. How long were you there for? Was it a year or 24 months? We graduate program. So another interesting fact about my story and my journey is that um, mm -hmm. it was not just one line, right? So when I was busy with the, um, with the Sanofi graduate program, 
um, then mm-hmm. we were awarded the scholarship, but the scholarship was going to start in 2019 in January. So 2019 of January, I was now waiting to start, but this is now 2018, still in August. I'm still finalizing, you know, you know, my, my things at the, at this voluntary job. So, and then I got a call uh, from mm-hmm. one of the um, clinical research organizations. It's one of the biggest ones mm-hmm. in the country the world um, Mm -hmm. IQ via and they said to me we have uh, a position for you Um, come for an interview and let's see if it's something that you'd be interested in doing and I went for an interview and they gave me a clinical trial assistant role and I took it (laughs) and I took it (laughs) at that time no I had don't confuse us please don't confuse us when you were still in the graduate program but you got the job so while you're in the graduate program. So the graduate program you was going to start the following year in January. Oh, and okay. So so okay. there was so I had like two I had like three three months of just sitting and doing nothing. So during that period, I got the call, I got the offer, and I had to call the graduate program people. Would he, well, I just accepted an offer, so I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. you got you you then you got your first job. Then okay. So, okay. Now that's 2019. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we graduate program. Do you know what's what's or you don't know? Mm. No, I don't know. Unfortunately, Angzang Sakon Wuti figure it, you know, th- that far off into into the program. Yeah, so Bebang Agang Nigi anything to sign on. So I I didn't know. But you know, yeah. <laughs> I had friends who yeah. were not doing so bad. I think they got just just above ten thousand Rand for for starters. But it mm, also no, depends good. on where you were. They took some of the team. Yeah, they took some of the team to pharmacovigilance, some of the team to the regulatory team, some of the team to clinical mm-hmm. trials. So it was not very bad for a start. Yeah, it was decent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay. And then when Nagala, mm-hmm. how much were you getting at your first job? You're going to share with us how much you're getting at your first job, so, not your current job. It's fine. But I know you get paid well. Yes. <laughs> this girl gets paid well. Trust me. Oh, wow. Well, you know. It's it's well yeah. it's relative. <laughs> she gets paid well. I know her. <laughs> uh, yes, the so first job when I the first job um as a clinical trial assistant um with with almost no experience, I was taking mm-hmm. home just about fifteen thousand. Yeah, just just fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand max. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, there was good. Yeah. Okay. Not, not okay. Bad. And bad. then from there. Yeah. From there, you from just there, moved up quickly. The world was my oyster. <laughs> I just worked all the way, all the way, all the way to where I am now. <laughs> yeah. Ayana, please tell us about your current job. What does it entail? You know, there might be someone who's a BSc graduate or they're still studying but they are not really sure when you say clinical research that they don't really understand can you just tell us what do you do like on a daily basis what does your job it take and also another thing that i want to know does it do i need to do this job do i need to be in the bsc life sciences umbrella or i can get it maybe with other qualifications. Can you clarify this? So Mm. in order to make this um, the most informative session, I'm going to build a scenario. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought, Guti, Yongeleniti is all the medication that we consume, all the medication that is prescribed to us in the hospital, all the medication that is prescribed to us, it clicks at Discam, at all these pharmacies, all these places that you can possibly get medicine. Before it gets there, where is it coming from? Who's testing this medication? Where are they testing it? 
who's participating in this mm-hmm. testing? Give me the process. So now you have to ask yourself these questions. You know, you have the scientist, the scientist who's who has the molecular structure of this particular drug that they want to discover, right? Or, or that they have discovered, mm-hmm. right? And then this scientist mm-hmm. is affiliated to what we call pharmaceutical companies, right? So mm-hmm. this scientist is okay. affiliated to the pharmaceutical company. They design what we call a protocol, which is a, just a scientific mm-hmm. methodology to say, we have a drug, we just want to see how it works. We just want to see if it's going to heal people. It's going to work. It's going to do what we think it's going to do. Then now this drug okay. is firstly tested on animals, firstly tested on on, mm-hmm. on a small, after animals, it's tested on a small group of people, healthy people, volunteers. Mm-hmm. After that, it's taken to other phases of the trial as well until it gets to the clinical trial phase. So by the time okay. that that drug gets to the clinical trial phase, then that's when the mm. whole clinical trial industry starts. So now we have okay. clinical trial sites. So clinical trial sites is where our doctors mm-hmm. are sitting. So where do you find that? Bara right. is Baraguana the hospital is a hospital. That's where our doctors mm-hmm. are sitting. Charlotte Maglake is a hospital. That's where our doctors are sitting. So those are mm-hmm. our clinical trial sites. But those are very, very um, big examples, right? So now mm-hmm. you have this drug. You have this pharmaceutical company. You have this drug. They mm-hmm. want to test it on people in the hospital. Who do they approach? Okay. They approach the doctor. The doctor is the one that has the patient, mm-hmm. right? So now the pharmaceutical mm-hmm. company cannot just approach the doctor and say, here's a drug, give it to this person, see if it works or not, right? Mm-hmm. So now we need a okay. whole group of people who are in industry that will help make sure that if this drug does get to the people, it gets to the right people, it gets the, the mm-hmm. right way, the doctors are trained to do the right thing. They are trained to put the right patients in that study or whatever mm-hmm. um, we are trying to investigate about this drug. And who are those people? Mm-hmm. I'm one of those people. I'm a clinical research oh, associate okay. and clinical research associate is basically a person who is falling in between the pharmaceutical company and the doctor at site. So uh, my job is to make sure I take all this instruction from the pharmaceutical company and then I train the people at site, the doctors, how to do the study. And then my job is also to ensure that the patient is safe, that the doctor is not Mm. compromising the patient's safety, that the doctor is following Mm. the guidelines that the doctor is following all the regulations and ethics guidelines and instructions mm. and make sure that okay. the trial runs smoothly. So that is what I do. Okay. Mina, I want to know, if I want to participate in a study, do I get paid? So you don't get do paid get to paid? participate in the study. So you get you get like what, what we call remuner you get compensated for your travel. That's what they call it. That's how Sapra mm-hmm. wants us to call it. You get compensated for okay. your traveling, your inconvenience, your time, all of that. So they do give you transport money to to be part of the study, mm-hmm. but it, it's not a payment to be in the study. That that would be a wrong way oh, to put okay. it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it just depends yeah. how much is my transport. It just depends how much is my transport. Okay. No, uh, no, 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 no. It doesn't depend how much. It doesn't depend on how much your transport is. It depends on how much Sapra can approve that you get. So if Sapra says the budget. Bonnie's gonna get hundred rands for the study, you getting hundred rands. <laughs> okay. Also, you must you, now, must you must remember, Uguti Sapra is a regulation and it is a, a regulatory authority. So they don't want. Uh, institutions like the pharmaceutical companies to persuade people into being in the studies just because they get a big buck. 
So that's why okay. Sapa is just like, no, 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 give them this much. This is what we approve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't want it to be <laughs> commercial or monetized. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's talk about the degree now. Uh, can I, Okay. First of all, do I need honors or I can pursue this with my undergrad? You can definitely pursue my career with an undergrad. But I never discourage okay. people wanting wanting to study further. You never discourage that because you should remember, Bonnie Wuti, mm. um, in every industry, there's competition. In every mm. industry, there's always someone a- ahead of you. So if you can get mm-hmm. your honors degree, get it. If you can get your master's degree, get it. But with your BSc degree, you can still apply. You can get the training. You can get the opportunity. Okay. And all degrees under the life sciences they can apply so it doesn't mean good for human physiology and genetics yes that is correct this includes bsc in microbiology pharmacology mm-hmm. all of it qualifies funny enough some people come from a very very different background we do have medical mm. doctors that decide to be clinical research associates. It's also possible. We, we do see that sometimes. Sometimes we do see nurses. There's quite a very big number of nurses who pursue, mm. uh, who decide to pursue a career as clinical research associates and they just run with it. So I do have a friend mm. who studied uh, ele- uh, chemical engineering, but now he's a clinical okay. research associate. So opportunities okay. are endless and um, you can just take whatever you have and work with it. Mm, okay, guys, yeah. that, that's good to know. <laughs> that's good to know. Um, yeah, guys, please don't forget to like and share this video and leave any questions for Uayanda Kwanazi. Okay, last one, Gemanja, I have to let you go. I've kept you for a long time. <laughs> and in it, right? yes, time. Have, we have good <laughs> He advise your last words. I know, like you, yeah. you've been giving advice throughout this interview. You've been mm. there and there, but mm. like in summary, I end up, what can you say to someone? First of all, singai mageta ganja, singas position ganja, because I think in marketing, who's mageta as a, a, a professional is very important. Yeah, when so, how can people like make sure Gutibas mageta endi? Babu gave be attractive to the recruiter. If a recruiter shall be a boogie civiaco, you might be jama tips among honey there and there, Gabaniga one. Okay, very, very important. One, I always say never separate your professional life from the things that you are passionate about, right? Always find common mm-hmm. ground. Always find common ground. Mm-hmm. Number one, I would say find mm-hmm. that one thing that you're good at and prioritize mm. it um i'm gonna use an mm. example of a friend who was very passionate about chemical engineering and he developed mm. this device that was so cool i don't even know what it was doing but it was really really cool and he was passionate about it and he went to pitch mm. this idea at a pharmaceutical company mm. pharmaceutical company mm-hmm. said to him oh well we don't do these kind of things but because we can see mm. the passion in your eyes <laughs> and in the way that you are presenting this, we have an opportunity that you might be interested in. You see? So now okay. something that he mm. was very, very passionate about worked for him. Got him into spaces that he didn't even think he was going to be able to get to. So mm. just because you are mm. good at one thing doesn't mean you can't explore the next thing at your next door. Go there, prioritize okay. it, do that one thing, use it to get to the door. Two, okay. make sure to take initiative. Don't wait for Ayanda to advise you what to do. Don't wait for Uboni to mm. upload a video on YouTube on how to do it. Take initiative. If mm. a lot of people are taking uh, a left, take a right. See what mm. 
is happening on the right side, right? Try to be very creative in your recruitment process. There's not one way to to look for a job. There's not one way to to navigate it and find it, especially in disciplines like uh, um, uh, BSc uh, in life sciences. There's not one way to do things. So explore as much as you can. If you are given five mm. possible opportunities, try all five of them and see one mm. one should not, yield. And then number three, the, the, the industry the industry and is not cut and dry. You know, it's not like umundo or fundi accounting, which we know because okay, the next step is gonna be this. So I get you, I get you. I say number yes. three, Gamanj. Mm. Yes. Number three, constantly number evolve. Don't wait for an opportunity to present itself and then jump on it. Be the opportunity, create the opportunity for yourself. If Guru Konama, there's so many free um, online courses on LinkedIn that you can be a part of. Evolve, get those skills, put them in your CV. You know, put yourself out there. Constantly find opportunities, constantly find things to do, constantly mm. find ways to improve yourself as a brand. Because at the end of the day, you are a brand and you should market yourself as a brand. And be very open mm. to opportunities. By being open to opportunities, I'm not saying um, when opportunities come, even though it's not something that you were looking at, explore it. No, be strategic in how you are, you know, exploring these opportunities. If mm -hmm. um, you want to get to a certain discipline, Mao mm -hmm. taking a conference at some place and there's gonna be this person, this person, go. Go build a network. Open mm. yourself to those kind of opportunities. You will never who, know who you meet or who you find or who you bump into in these things. I'm a recruiter. They're always mm. there in spaces like that, trying to recruit new talent, trying to you know find new people to 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 get into into their teams. So find yourself mm. in those mm. spaces, even if it's overseas opportunities. Mm. Um, you can see now on TikTok. There's a lot of creatives now that are talking about their careers how they got there make those people your yeah. friends and make those people the crowd that you 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 spend most of your time with and you will definitely mm -hmm. learn quite a few things from from those platforms mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. linkedin is your friend especially if you want to be in pharma linkedin is your friend go follow all possible pharmaceutical companies you can find on linkedin if you are confused you can follow me on linkedin and copy my profile and <laughs> paste it to be like your own that will help you just go mimic do something do something and then last one don't be afraid to start small because especially when you have a graduated and you hold a bsc degree or you hold whatever degree you have out there and then someone mm. tells you, maybe you can volunteer to get yourself there. And you're just like, no, I, I deserve a job that's going to give me this much. So don't don't be afraid to mm. start small. I started small. I'm not saying everybody mm. should. But if an opportunity to start small presents itself, don't say no to it. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm <laughs> going to leave a profile, a LinkedIn profile. Yeah, I and uh, <laughs> then you can connect with her. Please, guys, Ningam Pombati, I got now seven to I and okay. So, uh, but maybe I and what you can do with me later, you can send me a couple of links that you think are useful. Maybe companies that you know now and again they're looking for graduates or interns, you know, maybe I and can do that for us. But, guys, don't send their massive CV, but you can do as she said, check out her profile. How she, whatever. <laughs> okay, and uh, thank you so much for your time. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, thank you so much we'll for having soon. me. We'll chat soon. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Molly. <laughs> this was great. <laughs> this was great, and thank you so okay. much to the village. I know. Um, if you didn't take anything out of this, at least take just one word and run hmm. with it. Yo, guys, there was one hell of a conversation with Uayanda Mkwanas. <laughs> she is a clinical research uh, associate. She holds a BSc degree in human physiology 
uh, genetics and uh, psychology. Guys, please make sure you share this video with uh, people that might need it. And also drop us some comments or oh, Ayanda will come back to this video and watch. Yo guys, I'm so tired. <laughs> You can see I'm just exhausted. But you know what? I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for supporting this village and thanks for watching. If you would like to be uh, one of my guests, please uh, do drop me an email and we shall chat. Bye.